In this video, we're going to take a look at how to paint trees using watercolor. We'll start by loosely sketching out the overall shapes of our trees. We'll draw three different varieties of trees so you get an overview of how the different shapes may be handled. I'm going to draw very loosely in the beginning stages here. I'm not concerned about the details, instead just the overall shape of the trees. I'm using an HB pencil to draw lightly. With the shapes of our trees determined, we're ready to start painting. But before we do, let's consider a few important factors. First of all, we'll need to consider the light source, or the area from which the light is originating. We'll create the illusion of a light source by creating lighter values on the side closest to the light source of the trees. We'll also need to add warmer tones in these areas. The warm tones will contrast with the cooler tones as well as the darker values in order to create the illusion of a light source. So we'll have darker values on the opposite side of the light source. These will be represented by cooler tones. Cool tones will also exist in the areas of cast shadow, not just the areas of coarse shadow on the trees. We'll start by establishing the lighter values and the warmer tones in the trees. For this first tree, I'll start by washing the entire tree using yellow ochre. We'll use a heavy amount of water for this initial application. We're establishing the overall shape of the tree here, but we're also establishing the warmer tonalities that will exist in the finished painting. With the surface still wet, I'll begin to establish some of the darker areas and some of the cooler tonalities using an application of Windsor Blue. Of course, I'm adding this color primarily in the areas of coarse shadow on the tree. This includes the left side of the tree as well as the trunk. We'll also give some indication of the cast shadow underneath. We'll continue to progressively build up the relationships between the warmer tonalities and the cooler tonalities. In this case, I'll add a heavier application of yellow ochre, followed by a heavier application of Windsor Blue in the shadowed areas. These colors will naturally mix in between, creating a more natural looking green. As these relationships are built up and color is added, we can use brush strokes to indicate some of the texture on the tree. With our warmer and cooler tonalities in place, we can start to indicate some of the local color on the tree. In this case, I'll mix the yellow ochre and the Windsor Blue with a bit of raw umber to produce a darker green. I'll start to add this color in the areas of coarse shadow on the tree. Here again, we can build up the texture of the tree. With watercolor painting, you typically start with the lighter values and progressively build up to the darker values. With each application, the value becomes progressively darker. It's a good idea to start light in the beginning and slowly build up the darker values over the course of the painting. To increase the contrast between light and dark values, a bit of water can be added to the surface and dabbed using a paper towel, lifting the color from the surface. With this area dry, we can go back with our darker green and start to fill in some of the shapes. Ultimately, it's the contrast between the light and dark values which will lead to the illusion of texture on the surface. And in this case, our texture is implied from both the brush strokes that are made and the shapes of the dark and light values on the tree. To heighten the contrast even further, we'll go back with another application of our mixture of yellow ochre, Windsor Blue and Raw Umber. In this case, more heavily concentrated with Windsor Blue to create a cooler color for the shadow. We'll also pull that color underneath in the area of cast shadow. Now let's take a look at painting a pond tree. 
we'll start again by establishing the lighter values and the warmer tonalities. I'll use a mixture of Windsor Red and Yellow Ochre. And here again, we'll just establish the shape of the tree first with our initial wash. We can go back and intensify the color with subsequent washes. Next, we'll use a mixture of Windsor Blue and Yellow Ochre and start to establish some of the shadowed areas. Because our yellow-orange mixture and our blue-green mixture are near complements of each other on the color wheel, the color will have a sense of depth and create some interesting effects on the surface. Now we can go back with the Windsor Blue and continue to establish the darker values and the cooler tonalities. And just as we did on our first tree, we'll progressively build up the relationships between the dark and light values, progressively getting darker with each application. Of course, the time of day and the location of your tree will affect the lights and the darks in your painting. Typically, objects that are closer to the viewer will have higher contrast between dark and light values, meaning often the darkest values in the picture plane are closest to the viewer. This means that we can adjust the intensity of color and the contrast between light and dark values to create the illusion of depth and space in the painting. If we want a tree to appear closer to the viewer, we can simply increase the contrast between dark and light values and intensify the colors that are applied. In the same way, if we want the tree to appear further away, we can lessen the contrast between light and dark values and make the color less intense. Now that we've got our cooler tonalities in place, we'll go back with yellow ochre and establish some of the warmer tonalities on the tree. Again, these will exist primarily on the side of the tree that's closest to the light source. We'll continue to increase the contrast between the warmer and cooler tonalities by adding a bit of Windsor Blue in the areas of shadow. And of course, we'll bring that color all the way down to the base of the tree and in the areas of cast shadow behind and underneath the tree. Now let's take a look at painting a third type of tree. Here again, we'll start by establishing the warmer tonalities and the lighter values. In this case, I'll use a mixture of Windsor Yellow and just a touch of Windsor Blue. This tree is closer to the viewer and a bit more of the detail is visible. Therefore, around the edges of the shape of the tree, I'll pull out a few strokes that may indicate the illusion of leaves. With our initial shape defined, we can go back and start to push the contrast between the warmer and cooler tonalities and the darker and lighter values, just as we have with the other trees. In this case, I'll use a mixture of Windsor Blue and just a touch of Windsor Yellow. Remember, it's the contrast between the light and dark values that ultimately lead to the illusion of texture. Therefore, there's not a need to paint every single leaf that's visible. Instead, we'll just concentrate on the shapes of value. And for this tree, we'll go back and establish some of the mid-tones. Again, this is a mixture of Windsor Blue and Windsor Yellow. It's important to mention that if the colors that I'm using are not available to you, other colors can be substituted. For example, instead of using Windsor Blue, Prussian Blue would make a nice replacement. And if you don't have Windsor Yellow, of course, Cadmium Yellow Hue or Gamboge Hue would make a nice replacement. We'll continue to build up the contrast between the light and dark values, here again with a heavier concentration of Windsor Blue. Colors are allowed to mix and bleed into one another while the surface is still wet. This of course is one of the desirable effects of using watercolor. We'll use our cooler and darker mixture to establish the trunk of the tree. We'll also pull out a few lines to indicate the branches of the tree. And in most situations, just a few marks for the branches are sufficient. We'll also use that dark mixture to create a bit of cast shadow underneath and behind the tree. And just as we have with the other two trees, we'll establish a bit of the ground. We'll add just a few dabs of Windsor Yellow 
while the surface is still wet to create a greener appearance. And now that the body of the tree has been allowed to dry, we can go back with a darker value and a cooler tonality. Again, we'll just push the values a bit further to finish up this last tree. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at painting three different trees using watercolor and I hope this tutorial has helped you out. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more, why not check out five video courses, weekly live instruction, and over 6,280 minutes of art instruction which includes video courses, downloadable ebooks, weekly live lessons streamed across the internet, and lesson plans for teachers. Just click on the Learn More Now button to start learning today.